Well, um, I have a source of graphite right here, a uh, pencil, a pencil base eraser with a brush uh, for sweeping and cleaning the paper. And what I'm going to do today is a demonstration of the eye, how to draw uh, the eye and make it um, a little bit more lifelike. There are, this is not going to be photo real per se, uh, but it is going to be very natural looking uh, with a natural appeal. I'm going to start by going to my source like before. For the sake of toning, I really like toning at the beginning. Um, you could almost consider it kind of like cheating. And uh, get the, t I'm, oh, by the way, I'm using tissue paper uh, here wrapped around my finger like so. And so what I'm gonna do is start with the basic shapes. Uh, so I'm gonna draw rather large. And I'm not looking for perfection. What I am looking for is something that my mind can see the eye emerge from. So there we have the basic forms. One of the drawbacks of using um, this type of tissue paper is that it does leave shards kind of like you had been erasing. But, you know, simple breath and it gets rid of most of it. What I'm doing now is putting in some just some natural shadow around the top of the eye and around between the uh, corner of the eye and the nose. And this eye in particular is going to be the subject's left eye. So the eye on the left hand side of the portrait. Just been doing it this way so I'm just going to stick with it. Now I'm going to go in and add a little more darkness to some parts of the toning. Just bear with me. I'm going to do that. Typically, there's going to be a heavier shadow across the top of the eye. <clears throat> now, what I am doing, I should tell you, is that I am thinking about my light source. Where is the light coming from on this? And I've decided that it's coming from almost where my source of graphite is and making contact with the eye about right there. So that's what I have in mind when I'm doing these, um, these tones from the beginning. Yeah, I'm gonna bring in a little more darkness over that so you can really start to see the eye emerging. And you can even, I really like how these highlights are present and I've kind of left those on purpose. They're not the exact shape that I'm probably going to end up with, but it helps my mind, my mind's eye to see where I'm going and get a strong idea where I'm going before I get there. Okay, so the next step at this point is to grab the eraser, which is about sharpened, not too exactly a fine point, but a fine enough point. If I sharpen it way too sharp, it's just gonna end up breaking off. Uh, so this is about perfect. So what I wanna do now is come in and I wanna decide where my light is going to make contact with the lens and draw a couple highlight uh, basically glare shapes. And this is really going to start to make it pop. And I like to make these sort of geometric uh, just to, to make it interesting and make it contrast. I'm going to draw another one. I'm going to draw a series of about three shapes. This one's going to be triangular. And I'm just making this up. I don't have a source that I'm looking at. So that's good. And then maybe another one there and an indication of a smaller light uh, making contact there. So maybe it's reflecting, I don't know, you see the crossbars like a window or something like that in their eye. Maybe a window is the light source or an industrial type of light, who knows. Now, for the white of the eye, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to draw the brighter part of the white of the eye. I'm not going to really erase all the way to the top but I might go ahead and give myself an indication with some line drawing with the eraser. Remember, I'm not really correct, correcting here. I'm just drawing, drawing back in. Then I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna bring the shape of the iris a little bit smaller, like so. And like so. <clears throat> so now you're starting to see the iris come into play there and I think I need to narrow this a little bit 
and I'm probably going to I'm probably going to correct that. I don't like the I like the bottom of the iris to be a little more narrow than the top as it makes contact. And now one thing I want to do here is kind of provide for some of the rim is what I would like to call it, the rim of the eyelid. And right here where the light is going to make contact, I might make this a little a little stronger and a little wider. Right through there. Like so. I'm going to go ahead and include the end of the eyeball as well. <clears throat> I always tell students it's best if you imagine that the eye is an actual ball sitting in the socket and so what you have here and here are the actual ends of the ball and then that means the eyelid goes past. Okay, time to stop playing around here. I want to actually now go in and draw, so I'm going to use a pencil to guide myself here and I want to draw the pupil and I want to draw the pupil nice and large. Maybe, maybe there. Something like that. Just to give myself a barometer or a little road map. And then I'm going to go ahead and color around these highlights that I mapped in. So I don't color them out. I color them in instead. And this should be very, very dark from the very beginning, as dark as you can make it. Okay. Now, one of my very next moves, uh, for me is to go ahead and shade the ends of the iris and what I like to do is shade using lines whose trajectory uh, end up pointing me and pointing your attention toward the pupil. And I'm going to clean up the edge like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a little hatching here that then I can I can shade in later. Back to the tissue again. <clears throat> Once I've got that uh, portion of the drawing in place, I'm going to do a little folding to tighten up the, the point and so I can get a little more detail and do a little blending of the drawing that I just did. And as I'm blending, one of the things that's going to happen is I'll get a tip that I can draw with, a point. I can draw with. I'm going to go ahead and hit these corners of the eye as well. And there's usually a shadow around the eye that's right there under the eye, like so. I'm going to go ahead and bring that in as well. Let's soften that edge a little bit. Any edge that's a little too hard, I like to just go in and soften it just, just enough. And I'm going to go up to my source. And what I'm doing here is thinking of the roundness of the eye. 
a little darker here, medium gray, and then brighter in this area. Darker here, medium gray, and then the brightest part of the, part of the flesh is there. A lot of the forgotten things people uh, neglect in the eye is the corner. It makes the eyeball pop and look like an eye that's sitting in a socket. Let me uh, shoo some of these things away. My next move is going to be that line for the fold of the skin. There and there. So we have an open, an eyelid that appears to be open. A little darker around the corner. Like so. Now again, my light source is coming in from over here, so this portion of the shadow should be a little bit darker than this over here, so that's all I'm doing. I'm just adding some of the natural darkness that would appear on this side. Reinforce that line a little bit. And what I like about these soft lines is that your mind kind of fills in the rest. I try to stay away from using a lot of hard lines. This tool can also be a nice smudging tool, smearing. If I don't press too hard, I can spread and smear and smudge and draw with the same tool. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come back in and draw some points of light into the iris. And some of these are going to prove really important. If you think about light coming from this direction, what it's doing is it's going to make contact with a see-through lens. And then the iris, which is behind the lens in your anatomy there, it makes contact here. So the light is going to actually have a point of contact that I want to draw. So I'm going to put a, a little bit of a stronger presence of light and highlight on that part of the iris, like so. <clears throat> Now, one thing that can be done to uh, close the deal on, on this one and bring it uh, a little more to life is you can use, you see how that's shaped and it has some corners. If I take one of those corners and lay it down and use this technique side to side, that can prove pretty handy for eyelashes or the illusion of eyelashes. So what I want to do now is add a little weight to the upper eyelid and then just come in. Like so. Give myself a little bit of a harder line there. And I'll probably use my eraser tool to come in and, and soften some of these moves that I'm making here. And then same thing here, except these lines down here, I want to leave a little bit lighter, because typically you have more eyelash, eyelashes on the, on the upper eyelid, the top eyelid, than you do on the bottom. Like so. Soften that some. Soften these. I'm not erasing now as much as I am smearing and smudging with this tool. little highlight, bring a highlight back in where the eye is making contact with, uh, well, the light is making contact. There we go.